sample space is a huge part of being able to look at the beginnings of probability. So in this video, what we're going to look at is we are going to look at um, an introductory into probability through the eyes of sample space. Now there are two main ways that you can go about creating yourself a sample space based on the information provided. The first way is to just simply list out your sample space based on running through a series of um, choices and the second is using what's called a tree diagram. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show you two examples, one of which where we use the imp information provided in the story in order to create our sample space and the other where we use a tree diagram in order to create our sample space. Okay. Now a sample space is in general a set of all potential possible outcomes indicated by your set of information. So in this problem, we have five marbles in a bag, one of each of the following colors, where we have blue, clear, green, yellow, and red. And then we have that two marbles are drawn consecutively. Assuming that the first marble is not put back in the bag before the second marble is drawn, create your sample space. Okay. So in other words, the important piece that we have to pay attention here is that first we're going to assume that the first marble is not put back before the second marble is um, drawn. So what this is really getting at is that your order is important. Okay. And so here you need to create your sample space. So one way that I like to do that is I like to write out on the side my list of my um, samples. So here I have blue, which we could call B. Then I have clear, which is a C. I have green, G. I have yellow, which is a Y. And I have red, which is R. Now in this case, again, order matters. So what that means is if I want to say that my first um, marble drawing is a blue, I'm going to open my sample with a brace or a squiggly line, and then I'm going to start listing it. So first, if I want to start by drawing a blue, so blue comes out first, then I would look at what comes out next. Well, my possibilities are I could draw a clear, or if I draw a blue, I could draw a green. Or if I drew blue first, I could then pick yellow or blue followed by red. So I have five marbles, which means my sample space for each color is going to have four options because I only have one marble of each color. So once you satisfy all of your blues, you move on to the next one. So here my next one would be clear. So if I started with the clear, the first thing I could draw is a blue. I could also start with clear, then draw green. I could start with clear and draw yellow, or clear followed by red. Okay. Then move down the line, I've got green. So if I started with green, I could then draw blue. I could start with green and draw clear. I could start with green and draw yellow. I could start with green and draw a red. And then finally, I have yellow. So if I start with yellow, I could then draw blue. Or if I start with yellow, I could draw clear. I could start with yellow, draw green. Or I could start with yellow and draw a red. And last, I could start with red. So if I start with red, I could then draw blue. I could draw a red and then clear. I could draw a red and then green. I could draw a red and then yellow. Since I don't have any other marbles, I would close my sample space with the end of the brace, or i.e. a squiggly line. Okay. Now what I did here is I have listed out individually all possible options that we could pick drawing a marble out of that bag. And so that is your sample space for this particular problem. 
Now like I said, the other method that we can use to try and create a sample space is a tree diagram. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to figure out my sample space for tossing a coin three times, there's one thing that I have to recognize first, is that any coin has two options. You have the heads side, which we could call H, and you have what we call your tails side, or T. So I have to draw a sample space, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, okay, what happens if I take this coin, and the first time I flip it, I end up with heads. So I would start my sample space off with heads. That is my first toss, okay? So that's important to recognize, is that this right here represents your first toss. Now, if I pick that coin up to toss my second toss, I have two options. When I toss that coin, I can either be a heads or I could be a tails, okay? And so if we look, this second stage right here ends up being your second toss. Now with that, let's say I toss to heads and then I toss to heads, I still have to toss one more time because my problem said three. So here, if I toss my coin a third time, again, I have two choices. I can have a heads or tails as an option. Well, if I had started with a heads and I tossed to a tails, my third toss, again, still only has two options, a heads or a tails. And so this row right down here represents your third toss. So what you did is you created your tree diagram to represent three tosses. Well, this tree diagram is specific to if my first toss was heads. However, my first toss could have also been a tails. So if my first toss was a tails, then again my second toss has two options. It has a heads or a tails option. And then my third toss, just like before, has two options. I have a heads and a tails, but then I have to do the same thing over here, a heads or a tails. Now, in order to create the sample space, what that means is that we have to go through your three tosses for your first tree diagram and three tosses for that second. So let me show you how that works here. We're gonna start by opening up our brace and we're going to just start going okay so if my first toss was a heads my second toss could be a heads and my third toss could be a heads so that is your first set now my first toss could be a heads my second toss could be a heads but then its third toss could be a tails that's the second set now in this case I can go heads I've exhausted my second toss being a heads, so I have to come over here and say, what if it was a tails? Well, its third toss could be a heads. There we go. And in this case, I could start with a heads, I could go to a tails, and I could go to a tails. Now, in looking at this, I don't have any other options that I can exhaust or use, so therefore, I have finished with my first tree diagram, so now I have to move over to the other. So I can look at what if I started with a tails, I could then do a heads followed by a heads. What if I started with a tails, I could do a heads followed by tails. What if I started with a tails, I could then do a tails followed by heads. And last, I could start with a tails, end to a tails, and finalize with the tails. Okay. And so here, again, we've exhausted all possibilities so we can close our sample set. Okay. So there we have it. Two different ways that you could approach creating or writing a sample space based on your given information. So if you have any questions on the basics of what it means to write a sample space for a probability, please let me know. Otherwise, I do hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.